Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclopes Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Saturday the 28th of June 2025. A lot to get through today, that developing east coast low, some pretty big changes in the forecast and suddenly a very clear picture has been painted for New South Wales. Rainfall coming in for North Queensland, a little bit of weather coming in for the southwest of Western Australia next week as well. All the details on those systems plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into the details for your Saturday morning today. So New South Wales is of course going to be the hot seat over the next couple of days as I'm sure everybody is well and truly in the loop at this point in time. We are expecting an east coast low to develop offshore from New South Wales and by some metrics this system is going to be very strong indeed. What's going to be causing this system? Well we do have some moisture up in North Queensland which is now sliding down into the central regions of Queensland. I'll get to that in the next part of the video. That's going to move down in towards southeastern and south central Queensland over the next couple of days and that's going to finally meet up with a bit of moisture coming in from the east over in the Coral and the Tasman Seas. That's going to happen throughout the course of this weekend and by Sunday night we're expecting this moisture here to begin properly developing a little bit offshore from the southeast corner of Queensland into early Monday morning when we're expecting the development of a low pressure system to then take place through Monday and into Tuesday. This is classic east coast low formation 101 here. Low pressure system being formed out of two uh, arriving bands of moisture swirling into each other. This system here is going to get its act together very quickly through Monday night and into Tuesday morning and expecting full east low, uh, east coast low blown conditions to be uh, kind of attained by this system here through Tuesday morning and into Tuesday afternoon. Through Tuesday afternoon this system will then continue to mature as it heads a little bit further south. We're expecting this system to be hovering offshore from about Taree through Tuesday afternoon and evening. The storm will then head a little bit further south uh, through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning with the most significant severe weather conditions expected now from about uh, midday on Tuesday through to about midday on Wednesday for locations between Wollongong going up to Taree. So that kind of scope uh, of the worst conditions here, the worst case scenario of this system has been brought forward by a couple of hours. Through Wednesday night into Thursday morning, the system will slowly weaken off and then head further out to see where it will then fall apart. You can see that a little bit clearly, or a little bit clearer as we zoom back out here, pulling it back to Tuesday and then through Wednesday and into Thursday, the system heading out into the Tasman Sea and then off towards New Zealand where some significant storm impacts are possible down there. So the major change from yesterday's forecast has been that this system is now expected to be a little bit further south than where we were initially expecting it to be in yesterday's forecast update. I did state that that was going to happen, so it's good that the forecast modelling is now uh, moving in a bit of a predictable motion at this point in time, and it looks like that the storm at its strongest stages, the low pressure system, is going to be offshore from about Newcastle, Nelson Bay or Taree, which if you know anything about uh, East Coast lows, that means that the worst conditions coming in just towards the west and the southwest of that low pressure system that is going to put Sydney, Gosford and Newcastle right in the firing line of this system here and some pretty significant severe weather conditions can be expected especially through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. I'll get to those in just a hot second. That's not uh, to say that severe weather is not expected elsewhere. We are expecting severe weather right up the coastline to about Coffs Harbour. Rainfall will extend inland out to about Armidale and Tamworth and we're expecting strong winds and heavy rainfall to extend south, well south of Wollongong down towards Ulladulla and then rainfall and strong winds also extending down towards uh, uh, Naruma and right down towards the Victoria New South Wales border at times through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And then like I said that system slowly picking itself uh, uh, offshore from the New South Wales coastline heading out into the Tasman Sea through Thursday and Friday and then down towards New Zealand. This system here has got a very good future ahead of it in terms of an intensity side of, uh, uh, standpoint. This system here is going to be able to intensify very quickly because of the piping hot sea temperatures offshore from the New South Wales east coast. Sea temperatures right now between 22 to 23 degrees Celsius, as, especially as you head south of Coffs Harbour right down towards Newcastle, then pushing 21 to 22, even up towards 23 in places offshore from Sydney and Newcastle. Still very warm. They're not as warm as what they were a couple of weeks ago, but still very warm even for this time of the year, and that's going to mean there's going to be plenty of available moisture and energy coming off the oceans that this system can make the most of and let me tell you it will make the most of it. Let's get stuck into the expected impacts from this system here. So this will look at four-day rainfall accumulations from midday tomorrow through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, extending out towards midday Thursday. Rainfall is expected to be the major player in this uh, storm system's impacts, uh, but we are also expecting strong winds, so I'll get to that in just a few seconds. Starting in the north and heading south, rainfall accumulations through Monday and Tuesday shouldn't amount to anything more than about 50 to 75 millimetres for locations into the northern river section of New South Wales. Anywhere north of Coffs Harbour 
isn't expecting anywhere more than about 75 millimetres of rainfall. Between Coffs Harbour down towards Kempsey and Port Macquarie, we're expecting rainfall accumulations up to 125 millimetres there. South of Port Macquarie through Tyree, Newcastle and Sydney is where the real rainfall is expected to be. And now that we've seen that this system has had that southerly shift, the firing line is going to be right into the Hunter region where we could be seeing some very significant rainfall accumulations there. So town by town, Newcastle looking at up to 200 millimetres of rainfall on just Tuesday and Wednesday morning alone. Gosford potentially up towards 225 millimetres of rainfall. Sydney is now looking at about 200 millimetres of rainfall potentially into their northern suburbs and about 150 millimetres into the east and about 100 millimetres out towards the west around Penrith. Rainfall accumulations between 100 to 150 millimetres expected in inland areas adjacent to Wollongong, uh, Nara, Ulladulla and right down towards Batemans Bay and then falls between 25 to 50 millimetres expected along the coastline south of Batemans Bay. Canberra at this point isn't expecting anything significant in the way of rainfall just a couple of millimetres at best at this point in time. But yes, yeah, really significant rainfall accumulations have been uh, made on the forecast now and they're moving a little bit further south, which means for those locations north of Sydney, especially through Gosford and Newcastle, you guys are really in the firing line for some pretty significant uh, rainfall at this point in time, which could cause some significant flood impacts. Like I said, the Hunter region is going to be ground zero at this point in time, but southern regions of the mid-north coast where the Gloucester River is and then out towards the Manning River and the Taree River, we could see some pretty significant uh, rainfall contributions to those rivers, which could also result in a bit of flooding. What you should be doing for your location right now in terms of flood uh, preparations isn't too much. This isn't a crazy amount of rainfall coming through, and it's certainly not something that's completely foreign to this part of New South Wales, especially for this time of the year from this sort of storm system. It does happen quite a lot, but we are still expecting a very significant quantity of rainfall, and if you do live in a really flood-prone area, it's probably a good idea now to begin sandbagging and making preparations for up to 250 or 300 millimetres, but I'm talking about a really flood-prone area outside of Gold Gosford up towards Cessnock, uh, outside of the Barrington Tops, Newcastle, and then over towards Gloucester and Tyree. We're talking about really flood prone areas at this point in time. If we do see flood watches and warnings being put out into effect, there'll be more information on the Bureau of Meteorology's page, but at this point in time, it really kind of looks like a bit of a touch and go situation as we might see no flooding from the system or we might see a pretty big flooding outbreak. Either way, I'm not expecting major flooding to uh, develop out of this storm system here. And if that, if that does change, I'll be able to give you an update over on the Facebook page. So make sure you do check that out uh, from uh, today. There'll be plenty of updates out there on this developing system. I did also mention that winds are going to be a bit, pretty big player from this system. In fact, they could be in some places the biggest player from this storm system, especially for coastal regions north of Sydney up to Newcastle and uh, Nelson Bay. This is a map showcasing wind accumulation. It's a bit like rainfall accumulation. It's the strongest wind gust over the selected time period, which is Sunday afternoon through to Thursday afternoon. And you can see here peak wind gusts on the forecast offshore between 125 out to 130 kilometers an hour and then onshore well north of 100 kilometers an hour pushing up towards 110 kilometers an hour in places we're expecting very strong wind gusts to come in from those squally showers and storm fronts which are going to deliver that extreme rainfall especially around Gosford up towards Newcastle so coastal locations and exposed locations make sure you are preparing for damaging and locally destructive wind gusts especially if you are in this kind of ground zero sort of uh, region uh, through the Hunter region outside of Newcastle it certainly will be quite windy that's for sure especially when we're looking at rain bands coming through Wind accumulation offshore though, and I would just like to say this is probably a forecast to take with a little bit of a grain of salt at this point in time. 190 kilometers an hour on the forecast outside of Lord Howe Island. That's something that I haven't really seen from the East Coast Low. Well, it's something I have never seen from the East Coast Low before, uh, which means that the forecast models are probably hinting at this being quite a convectively powerful and active storm system because you only get 190 kilometer an hour wind gusts in the most powerful of storm lines coming through. And that kind of does make sense at this point in time. This system here is going to make the most of some very moist and very uh, convectively favorable conditions at this point in time. So we're likely to see plenty more convection than what we would normally see in a system like this, which is going to make it substantially stronger and substantially more violent for uh, a time being. And it's not expected to be a long-lived system as well. We're only expecting this to really be pummeling the New South Wales coastline for about 18 to 24 hours, 36 at the most. So it's going to have not much time to deliver that rainfall accumulation, not much time to cause the significant impacts that it is expected to cause. We've also got some pretty significant waves coming through, and I think it goes without saying that from about now onwards or from about tonight onwards, any kind of shore-based or marine-based activity is absolutely a no-no, especially through Tuesday and Wednesday, where seas are expected to be up around that 7 or 8 metre mark offshore from New 
South Wales, expecting some massive waves to be moving through into the Hunter and the Metro coastline, and that's going to result in some pretty significant coastal erosion. I can already feel it. So again, if you do live in a very uh, coastal erosion prone location, it is probably a good idea to begin making necessary preparations and precautions ahead of the system because we are expecting some pretty significant losses to beaches and coastlines. Of course, any quest further questions or comments on this system, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. This is a very significant storm system. It's definitely going to shape up to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest, of the 2025 season. So again, make sure you are making those preparations. Make sure you are ready for this system because it is going to be a strong one. Uh, but that's going to have to do it on this system here. Let's pan up towards northern Queensland where we do have that rainfall, the more immediate uh, situation of rainfall moving through in towards north Queensland. It's just a few showers here and there right now, mainly around the Casper Coast, a few showers moving through from the southeast and a couple of showers also down towards the Whitsundays. We're beginning to see the rainfall develop though south of the Casper Coast into the Cardwell Gap area. Uh, when I say rainfall develop, I use that term very loosely. It's just a little patchy blotch of rainfall here and there on the radar right now. But we are expecting some relatively solid lines of rainfall to begin developing th uh, from this afternoon into uh, tomorrow afternoon and into Monday. And we could be seeing some heavier falls here and there as well. So again, not something to be taking uh, uh, very heavily, that's for sure, not something to be taken to heart making preparations over, but we do have a little bit of rainfall coming through and it could get a little bit heavy at times. And I know what you're thinking, rainfall at this time of the year in far north Queensland, get out of here. It doesn't happen and we do not want it. Well, it does happen every now and then and this system here has happened before. In fact, think back towards, I believe it was mid-May when we saw 40 or 50 millimetres falling over just a couple, of, oh no, it was just a couple of weeks ago actually, uh, over, uh, over the areas of north Queensland in towards central Queensland. This is the exact same weather system coming through. Through. A couple of good drops, like I said, uh, possible on Sunday night into early Monday morning, especially down in towards central and even south central Queensland. Falls can be as high as 50 millimetres in some places, and it's going to be for uh, places that kind of need the rainfall or certainly will not say no to the rainfall, that's for sure. Down around Rockhampton, Agnes Water, Gladstone, Bundaberg, those sort of areas, 50 millimetres or so possible through Monday morning. Rainfall will begin to clear and move offshore through Monday afternoon and Monday evening, pretty much clearing out of Queensland entirely through Monday evening and into Tuesday morning. A couple of thunderstorms also expected here and there through Sunday and into Monday, especially through Sunday night into early Monday morning across the wet Sundays, none of which are expected to be severe, but a few lightning strikes here and there could bring us back a couple of months to what the wet season was like. Again, nothing in the way of severe weather, nothing in the way of heavy rainfall, nothing in the way of anything to be concerned about up in North Queensland. I just thought it was an interesting aspect of the forecast worth mentioning at this point in time. And like I said, rainfall accumulation is likely to be uh, quite there. They're definitely going to show up for parts of central Queensland and we're looking at falls between 30 to 50 millimetres or even up towards 60 or even pushing 70 millimetres in places through Monday morning, clearing through Monday afternoon and evening. Uh, the wettest locations are likely to be between uh, Rockhampton down towards Bundaberg along the coastline, but we're also looking at some decent falls here and there around the southeastern corner of the Gulf of Carpentaria and potentially some healthy rainfall accumulations up in the Casper Coast and across the Daintree Rainforest, depending on what rainfall comes in from the southeast. Nothing too flash, but again, certainly some good rainfall is potentially on the cards at this point in time. And like I said, you can begin to see it developing now on the radar and the satellite imagery. And those winds remain very fresh out of the southeast, especially through the wet Sundays and some of those Coral Sea atolls. Well, winds right now averaging 40 to 50 kilometers an hour with gusts up around the 80 kilometer an hour mark, certainly starting to get quite breezy. And that weather is going to make a turn for the more unpleasant side of things across north and far north Queensland over the next couple of hours. And it really is going to be quite an unpleasant weekend across some places with a few showers and some strong winds embedded. It's not going to be the picture perfect textbook Queensland weather that we are. Uh, used to seeing especially at this time of the year Anyways, that will do it for North Queensland, panning it down to wintry southwest and western Australia. Another very cold start this morning across the southwest. Uh, lots of places are dipping close to zero. Interestingly, we haven't had a proper freeze across southwest and western Australia yet. Generally, when we're talking about uh, as we head in towards uh, late June and into early July, I know July and August tend to, uh, tend to be much colder than what June can be across the southwest of western Australia, but I am surprised we haven't had a widespread swathe of locations so far this winter season with a night below freezing, even if it's just below freezing. We've only had kind of that two or three or four degree nights across much of the southwest with a few locations getting close towards zero. So temperatures so far have certainly been well above average minimum temperatures, that being across the southwest of WA. And that's mostly been uh, in part due to the moisture coming in from the southwest that really hasn't stopped. And you can see just a few showers here and there across the south coastal region, moving out towards the Esperance area and out towards Cape Arid. But again, no rainfall expected throughout the re uh, remainder of this weekend for uh, areas, especially areas further inland. A few drops 
types of rainfall are possible to develop through Monday and into Tuesday as a weak low pressure system then begins to develop offshore. And we might see a good storm line or two move through Monday afternoon into Monday evening into the southwest capes and the south coastal region. But again, I wouldn't get your hopes up for anything too crazy in the way of rainfall. At this point in time, though, it does look like that weak low pressure system could make the most of some pretty warm sea temperatures through Monday afternoon and into Monday evening. And we might see some heavier rainfall here and there, potentially pushing that 20 to 40 millimeter mark uh, for the southwest cope, uh, capes and the south coastal region. But again, nothing really making it up into the Perth metro area. So the rainfall accumulations there are going to remain relatively disappointing. And then through Wednesday and Thursday, we're expecting the development of another low pressure system, quite a large one, especially sweeping up from the southwest through Thursday morning. And that will likely provide the southwest WA with a lot more rainfall than what we were looking at uh, on the forecast for Monday and Tuesday. In fact, some pretty widespread rainfall accumulations expected across the southwest caves through the Perth and the lower west regions and then into the wheat belt as well. In fact, rainfall making it quite far out into the wheat belt all the way out towards the goldfields. And that's the healthy rainfall accumulations that we're really looking for at this time of the year. Rainfall will then continue uh, here and there across the southwest capes for a couple of days returning in the form of another strong cold front coming through on the 6th and the 7th of July respectively and then another strong cold front it looks like a bit of a low pressure system trying to develop here on the forecast modeling through Tuesday and Wednesday the 8th and 9th of July respectively but I'd take that one with a pretty heavy pinch of salt because the way that this system develops here it looks like the forecast models might have had a bit of a difficult time discerning what systems what and they kind of merge to so uh, it, it does look like right now the second week of July is going to shape up to be quite wet but it is likely to be a little bit drier than what the forecast models are putting out right now it looks like the forecast modeling is having a little bit of trouble kind of discerning one system from another as i just said but yeah rainfall accumulations across the southwest capes still remaining positive in fact up to 100 millimeters expected here and there over the next 14 days good rainfall for this time of the year even though we are in winter and kind of expect it we do desperately need that rainfall and it is very much welcome with open arms again though i do feel like rainfall accumulations on this forecast have been overbaked a little bit i think the gfs for forecast might have a bit more of an accurate picture uh, here with falls widespread between 50 to 100 millimeters expected over the next 14 days and then more respectable falls between 10 to 25 millimeters out into the eastern and the northern wheat belt and 25 to 50 millimeters expected into the western and the southwestern wheat belt uh, kind of occurring on the forecast modeling again we will have to wait and see what does stick on the forecast models at this point in time but southwest and western australia also looking at some healthy rainfall accumulations here and there over the next 14 days very very good to see on that note, though, that is going to have to do it for today's weather forecast. I'm thinking tomorrow there might be twice daily forecast updates, especially on the New South Wales situation as that does develop. We are expecting a healthy storm system out of that, that's for sure. And whilst it hasn't started yet, they've still got the showers coming out of the southwest. Uh, definitely a bit of a precursor into the rainfall that they're going to be getting there and getting ready to saturate the ground, of course, as you'd expect from a system like this, just wanting to give New South Wales 100% of its wrath and not missing any locations. So unfortunately, it does look like a pretty bad situation now for the New South Wales, Mid-North Coast and the Hunter regions. A special shout out, of course, the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run the show without them. So of course, their support is always much appreciated, but that is going to have to do it for me today. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.